Hi there everyone. The new HD Zero goggles have been one of the most talked about products in FPV this month. And for good reason. Almost everyone who has got their hands on a set of these has given them a glowing review for a whole bunch of different reasons. But one of the main threads that runs through a lot of the reviews is the versatility of these goggles. Because they support analog, HD Zero and the walk snail system, they are the most versatile premium goggle that you can buy today. And a lot has been made of the fact that these HD Zero goggles are the only goggles with OLED screens that support the 720p 100 frames per second mode in the walk snail VRX. And the reasoning that goes along with that is that because these HD Zero goggles support the fastest, lowest latency mode of the walk snail VRX, that they should be pretty much equivalent in terms of performance, image quality, and especially latency to the full fat walk snail goggles. This seems like a reasonable assumption to make, but it certainly requires testing. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be putting the HD Zero goggle plus the walk snail VRX up against the walk snail avatar goggle to see how they stack up in terms of latency. And after we've looked at that data, I'm also very excited to tell you about another project that I've been working on called AOS Labs. If you like these kind of testing videos, then you are definitely going to want to hear more about AOS Labs, and we're going to talk about that later in the video. But right now, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive straight into the testing. I'll put a link to the test method down in the video description, but needless to say, we have the systems synchronized so that the LEDs turn on at zero, and then we can watch the frames come in at 1,000 frames per second on the high-speed camera. The avatar goggles are the first to come in at 720p 100 frames per second, followed shortly after by the HD Zero plus walk snail VRX at 100 frames per second, then the avatar goggles at 1080p 60, and finally the HD Zero goggles plus the walk snail VRX at 1080p 60. What we can see is that the HD Zero goggles plus walk snail VRX are slower than the avatar goggles in both of these modes. We can see from this first test that even though the HD Zero goggle does support the 720p 100 frames per second mode from the walk snail VRX, it isn't able to achieve quite the same latency as the avatar goggle. Now let's put the HD Zero goggle up against the Sky 04X, both using the walk snail VRX and see what that tells us. Here we have the Sky 04X on top and the HD Zero goggle underneath. The Sky 04X is running at 60 frames per second and the HD Zero goggle is running at 100 frames per second in 720p and 60 frames per second in 1080. At 720p, both the Sky 04X and the HD Zero goggle have almost identical time to first pixel latency with the higher frame rate on the HD Zero goggle giving it a faster time to full frame. However, at 1080p, the Sky 04X actually outperforms the HD Zero goggle and delivers a slightly lower latency, both in time to first pixel and time to first full frame. So what can we learn from this data? Well, I think there's a few key points. The first is that neither of the systems using the walk snail VRX are as fast as the avatar goggles. So the extra latency varies, but it looks to be about an extra 10 to 12 milliseconds at 100 frames per second, or about an extra six milliseconds at 60 frames per second. And this was quite a surprise to me. So I reached out to Carl at HD Zero about this, and he's very confident that the HDMI input lag of the HD Zero goggles is on the order of you know one to two milliseconds or maybe even less. So it's not the input side of the HD Zero goggles that's causing the extra latency, which means that it's probably in the HDMI output stage of the walk snail VRX. Because the walk snail VRX has to convert the video to HDMI, that's adding some latency over what the avatar goggles are able to achieve. The second thing to be aware of is that because of this extra latency inside the walk snail VRX, the advantage of 720p 100 frames per second is not so big in terms of latency compared to 720p at 60 frames per second. And it's probably only on the order of five or six milliseconds, something like that. 
So it does eat into the benefit of that 100 frames per second mode. The final thing to note is that the Sky Zone does much better in terms of latency at 60 frames per second than the HD Zero goggle does. And again, I spoke to Carl about this. The HDMI input lag is not optimized yet for 60 frames per second. So it's optimized for 100 frames per second, so you get the minimum input lag at 100 frames per second, but it's not optimized for 60. Now this is on their software roadmap, and so we should expect a firmware build in the near future with that optimized, and we then should see that the HD Zero goggles and the Sky Zones have equivalent input lag at 60 frames per second, and that should be fine. So it's not something to worry about long term, but just to be aware of right now that the HD Zero goggles are a bit slower at 60 frames per second than, for example, another goggle like the Sky Zones. So now that we've talked about this test data, I want to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about AOS Labs. If you've followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I love to make in-depth scientific testing videos of different FPV components. And I've tested a whole bunch of stuff. I've tested motors and props and ESCs. I've tested goggles and cameras and VTXs. And this is stuff that I, I really enjoy doing. I want to keep doing it, and I'm definitely going to keep making testing videos on YouTube. But I also want to do a little bit more with my testing. I want to create somewhere where pilots can go where all of the test data for all of the components that I've tested is available for you to use to help drive the decisions on which FPV products are going to be right for your next build. And so to do that, I've created a place called AOS Labs. AOS Labs is part of my website, AOSRC.com, and you, you're going to be able to go there and find test data for lots of different products and be able to compare the performance of different products to find out which one is best for you. And I hope this will be better in some ways than trying to search through YouTube videos to find the test results for a particular component. You'll just be able to see them all there on a web page. It's all still a work in progress right now, but what I have is some spreadsheets in Google Drive that are driving a data visualization tool called Looker Studio, which then renders these graphs and charts and then embeds them into the pages on AOS Labs. So these charts and graphs are interactive. You'll be able to click on them, filter them, and look through all the data to your heart's content. My ambition is to keep expanding my capability for testing different FPV components. For example, I have just bought a new camera test chart which is going to allow me to scientifically assess the spatial resolution of different FPV cameras so that we can determine which cameras capture the most detail in an image. I'm also hoping to get into battery testing, but that's going to be a slightly bigger investment of time and equipment. If you'd like to support this work that I'm doing with AOS Labs, there's a couple of different ways to do it. The best way is through my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server. And I'm also working on some more in-depth data analysis tools for some of the data sets in AOS Labs. And you'll get access to those as soon as they become available as well. If you're not able to commit to a subscription right now, but you still want to throw a few dollars in my hat to support the test work, then I also have a buy me a coffee. And I'll put links to both of those down in the video description. AOS Labs is still a work in progress, and I'm really keen to hear your feedback on how I can improve it and make it better. Please feel free to leave those comments down below, or you can send me an email using the contact form on the website. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.